Church, we just celebrated our real conference and it was absolutely amazing. And we are so excited that the sessions are now available for you to watch virtually to share with your friends and your family. And what we're going to experience right now was the final session by Pastor Joachim Lundquist. It was such an incredibly powerful word and we want to make sure that you get to hear it, experience it, and allow the Lord to change you through it as well. So enjoy this message by Pastor Joachim. Hey, ICB Spain, this is Joachim Lundquist. I'm the pastor of Word of Life Church in Uppsala, Sweden. And I've been so blessed and honored to be part of your Real Women's Conference this weekend. It's been absolutely amazing. And I feel so blessed and recharged in my heart. Now, um, if, you were part, if you were part of that conference, you heard that I was initially scheduled to be here with my wife, Maria. But at, we, as we were at the airport coming here, uh, we were informed that her father has been taken ill. He was taken by ambulance to a hospital. And uh, for that reason, she had to cancel her trip and go straight from the airport to be with him at this time. Uh, unfortunately, now we've learned that the condition is, is uh, even more serious. And unfortunately, this means that I have to rearrange my my uh, return flights to to go home as soon as possible. And unfortunately, I cannot be with you this Sunday morning. And I'm so sorry about this, but I do hope that you understand. Uh, still, uh, I, I want to share my heart with you guys and, and share with you the message that God placed on my heart for you for this Sunday. And I uh, hope it's okay that we're going to do it this way rather than me being physically present. So uh, why don't we just start by praying and open our, opening our hearts for the Word of God. Lord, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. And we thank you now that you, Holy Spirit, who have been sent by the Father to enlighten our hearts and point to Jesus, will be with us as we read the Word of God this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you want a headline for what I'm about to speak on, uh, it might well be, Spirit Comes, Church Goes. Spirit comes, church goes. And I want to start out in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And many of you will know the story. It's the outpouring of the Spirit, the day of Pentecost. And reading in the first six verses, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Now, I've read this story so many times. And for most of the times, I've been thinking to myself, well, on the day of Pentecost, God is doing one thing. He's equipping his baby church with the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling it to go out and fulfill the Great Commission, preach the gospel of Jesus everywhere all around the world. But a few years ago, the Spirit started speaking to me and I realized that on the day of Pentecost, God is not only doing one thing, he's actually doing two things. One thing is happening inside the church, within the four walls of the church, of the upper room. But another thing is happening out on the street. The same movement of the Holy Spirit that creates this new boldness and presence of God inside the heart of the believers creates curiosity in the hearts of the people on the streets. The same thunder and, and tumult that filled the church with boldness, fills the people on the street with a spiritual vacuum. So you could say that one group of people, the church, you and I, are prepared to share. But at the same time, when the Spirit moves, another group of people are being prepared to receive. One group prepared by the Spirit to speak, and another group prepared by the Spirit to listen. It's like God is writing a big exclamation mark over his church, but at the same time, a big question mark over the world that they're supposed to encounter when they come out of the upper room. And God started speaking to me saying, Joachim, it's the same way today. 
whenever the spirit moves like it has been doing throughout this weekend and, and during the worship of this service, we are stirred, our hearts are recharged with boldness to go out in our world and share the good news of, of Jesus and share the love and the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, somewhere out there, there will be a neighbor of yours, an, a relative, a friend, a colleague at work, a fellow student at your university that is right now being prepared by the Spirit to receive the word that you are being prepared to share. Someone in your world right here and right now are being prepared to listen to the world word that you are prepared to speak into their lives. And as I understood this, I started teaching this to our church back home. And we started to grow our faith that as we came together on Sunday, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and enjoying the presence of the Spirit, at that very same time, there will be someone out there that we will encounter in the week that is coming that is prepared by the same Spirit to receive that peace that you are being prepared to communicate, to receive that gospel that you are being prepared to share. And as we did, as we stirred our faith for that, we began to see so many miracles. And I especially remember that Muslim refugee that came to Sweden as a 25-year-old a few years ago. Now we ended up in, in a Swedish city about one hour's drive north of our city where we are and uh, started to try to make this new frozen nation in Northern Europe his new home. And then all of a sudden he started realizing something very strange is happening. He realized he had the same dream every single night. It was a dream that seemed to reappear every single night. And in the dream, he saw a big auditorium with thousands of people standing like this with their hands raised. Now, this guy, again, was a Muslim. He's never been in contact with anything Christian. He didn't know how to relate to this dream. What is this auditorium and, and why are all these people standing like this? So he started walking around on the streets of his city, asking random people, excuse me, do you know of a big auditorium where thousands of people are standing like this? And everybody thought it was crazy because, first of all, Swedes don't talk to one another in public. Nobody knew about this auditorium and nobody could help him. So he, he came to the conclusion that, hmm, the, the auditorium that I'm seeing in my dream is a big place. So probably it's in the capital of Sweden, which is Stockholm. So this young Muslim goes on a train to Stockholm to find the mysterious auditorium that is appearing in his dream. Now, when you go from his city to Stockholm, the last station that you pass on your way is our city, Uppsala. So the train passed us and went to Stockholm. Now, when this young Muslim exited the train and got out on the platform, there is a stranger there. And this stranger goes straight up to this young Muslim and says to him, you went one station too far, man. You need to go back one station and you will find what you're looking for. And this young Muslim says, uh, thank you. And he goes back on the train, goes back one station according to the instructions, and he ends up in Uppsala where we are. Now he goes out on the street and asks the first random person, excuse me, do you know of a big place where thousands of people are standing like this? And that person says, that's Word of Life Church. Everybody knows that. So he gives the Muslim directions and he takes the bus and he arrives at our church. It's a Saturday night and he enters the church. First time he's ever been inside a church. And when he comes into the auditorium, he recognizes the auditorium in detail from his dream. The balconies, the color schemes, everything. This is the place he's been dreaming about for days and days. And the first thing he hears when he comes into the auditorium is me giving the altar call, saying, if you don't know Jesus, and he hears the gospel for the first time, he lifts up his hand and accepts Jesus Christ in his heart. And only later did we realize how much of heavenly coordination went into this process, how God gave him a dream and put it on repeat. 
how God placed an angel at the train station of Stockholm. Now, my friend, this is how much God loves one single individual. And we were again reminded that when the Spirit moves, we are prepared to speak, but truly, surely, the world around us is also prepared to listen. Now, if God prepares us to speak and he prepares the world to listen, then what is our part to play? What is our part of the equation? Two things, my friend. Number one, dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is with you. Dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is with you. Now, I find it so interesting and, and wonderful that when Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to his disciples in John chapter 14, I love the fact that he's emphasizing something very special about the Holy Spirit. Let's read what it says. John chapter 14, verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Church, let's say, let's say together, forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because he neither, it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Friends, the number one thing that Jesus wants you to know about the Holy Spirit is not that he's big and powerful, although he is. And it's not that he's going to give you goosebumps and, and have you fall over when somebody prays for you, although he might. But the first thing Jesus wants you to know about the Holy Spirit is that he will always be with you, forever be with you. He will never, ever leave you. He will stick with you every single day of your life. That's the first initial revelation that Jesus wants you to have about this Holy Spirit. And this means, friends, that there will be days when you feel his presence and how we love those days. But there also will be days when you don't feel anything at all. And those are the days when you need to dare to believe that he's with you. Even though you don't sense him, even though there is no electric presence, even though there are no goosebumps, because friend, hear me out. The Holy Spirit is not with you because you feel him. He is with you because Jesus promised that he would be. And Jesus never lies. Praise God. So what Jesus wants you to do in those days where you don't feel a thing is simply to dare to believe that regardless of your emotional state right now, he is with you because Jesus promised he would be. Which means, friend, that tomorrow, Monday, he will be with you when you go to school. He will you be with you when you go to work. He will be with you in your interactions with your friends and family. He will be with you as you speak to your neighbors. He is right there. So dare to believe that he is. Because if you make that decision at those moments where you don't feel a thing, and your emotions are not testifying about the presence and the glory of God, that's when a miracle is waiting on the other side of your obedience. I remember a couple of years ago, I was on an airplane flying to the Faroe Islands, a small group of islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And I was preaching there at an Easter conference. And I was sitting there on the plane, reading my Bible and getting my heart ready for the upcoming services. Now, next to me was a big man. Let's just call him extra, extra large in every direction, more or less. You get it. And apart from being super big, he was also super drunk. This guy was so intoxicated that I almost became drunk from the fumes that came out of his body. And then because he was so drunk, he was also very loud. And, and friends uh, of, of Barcelona, I need to tell you something about Swedish people. When, when somebody's loud in Sweden, everybody else quiets down, okay? So in this plane, 
that left from Sweden. This guy was having a solo performance and everybody else was listening to him regardless of whether they wanted to or not. He was just sharing with the loudest of voice everything that went into his mind at the time. And everybody else had to listen. And he's sitting right next to me. Hmm. Now you might think, oh, Pastor Joachim, holy man of God, I bet you were praying for the salvation of his soul at the time. No. I have to be honest with you guys. I wasn't. I wasn't in prayer mode at all. I was in annoyment and irritation mode. That's the mode I was in at the time. Because not only did he speak in a loud voice, not only did he smell of alcohol, he kept doing these hand gestures, punching me all the time. And I'm trying to read my Bible, and this guy is messing with my holiness here. <laughs> so if I was praying for anything, I was praying for, for God to move him to another seat. Upgrade him, downgrade him, whatever grade him, just get him away from me. And then all of a sudden the captain came on the speaker and the captain said, ladies and gentlemen, I got bad news. There is a storm over the Faroe Islands and we will not be able to land tonight. We will have to turn the flight around and go back to Stockholm, Sweden, and hopefully we can make another attempt tomorrow morning. We're sorry for any inconvenience. And all over the plane, there was the sound of people going, oh. And if you want to know, that's Swedish people expressing intense anger. <laughs> that's how far we will go. That, oh. If you ever hear a Swede go, oh, run for your life because it's serious. Everybody went, oh, apart from this guy. He started screaming and shouting. He said, no. I want to land tonight. I want to see my family. Get this flight down. And everybody was just going, ah. But then all of a sudden, he looked at me and he looked at my Bible and he looked back at me. And then he said, man, you better pray right now. <laughs> and I was taken completely off guard. I, I wasn't prepared for that at all. I didn't know what to say. I was just trying to come up with the best answer I could possibly find. So I, I said, um... No, I will only pray if you pray with me. And I thought, yeah, come on, that's, that's fair. And the whole, the, please understand, the whole plane is now listening to this conversation. So he thought for a while, and then he said, no, I don't believe in God. Isn't it amazing that he wants me to pray to a God that he's, he does not believe in. So I said to him, what? If you don't pray, I don't pray either. And the plane went, oh. And then he was quiet for a while. And then he turned to me again. And I will never forget this. And he said, if I pray with you, will we be able to land tonight? Oh. The plane is now dead quiet. Everybody wants to know, what is the Bible guy going to say now? And I was searching so desperately on the inside. I was looking for that spiritual loudspeaker, that voice inside of me saying, Yes, Joachim, you will be able to land. I was just praying silently for God to send an angel, Michael, Gabriel, anyone, or right on the wall of the plane with fire saying, yes, you will be able to land some kind of confirmation. There was a uh, nothing. There was dead quiet. I did not have a single word. I did not have goosebumps, no emotional experience. I didn't have anything apart from the promise of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will be with me forever. So I took the probably the deepest breath I've ever taken in my life. And I said, yes. <laughs> if we pray together, we will be able to land. So help me God. So this guy says, well, let's pray then. And he folded his hands and he bowed his head. And I prayed with him and I prayed for a long time. That was like extended version, director's cut prayer. 
and and I prayed for everything I could come up with, just, just wanting to allow God maximum time to perform this miracle. And eventually I ran out of words and I said, God, I pray we will be able to land tonight in Jesus' name, amen. And he said, amen. And the whole plane said, amen. No, they didn't do that. I kid you not, five seconds later, the captain is back on the intercom saying, ladies and gentlemen, we just heard news from the Faroe Islands. The storm has cleared and we will be able to land tonight. And my big fat drunk Faroe Island friend looked at me like this. And the whole plane was cheering. Friends, I'm not sharing this story with you to make me look like a spiritual superhero. Quite the opposite. I'm saying it to remind you that sometimes you will not feel anything. You will not have any confirmation whatsoever. You will not hear that voice that you wish you would hear. You would not have those goosebumps or that emotional electricity that you love and I love so much. But he is with you just the same. And if you dare to believe that he is, there's a miracle awaiting to happen. And that church that is supernaturally prepared to share will connect with the world supernaturally prepared to receive. Now the second thing, the final thing that is our part to play, apart from daring to believe that he's with us, is simply this, step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. We know the story from Matthew 14 where Jesus comes walking on the water. There's a conversation with, between him and his, his disciples who are in a boat. And he ends with asking Peter to come join him on the water. And Peter has to question everything he knew about boats and the, and the Sea of Galilee and everything. And in obedience, he steps out of his boat. Now, I guess most of us don't have boats. So how does this relate to our world? Well, you see the boat represents our zone of comfort. It represents our safety zone, the area in which we are in full control. Just like Peter the fisherman was in full control inside his fisherman's boat. We have that area in our lives as well. We have an area in which we feel safe, we feel in control, we feel comfortable, and that's okay. A lot of times Jesus steps into our boats, into our area of comfortability. But there will be times when he will ask you to step out of your boat and do something that you're not comfortable, comfortable with. And when you do, and when you obey, even though your emotions and your experience might not really agree with the step of, of faith that God is asking you to take, again, there is a miracle awaiting you. I remember a couple of years ago when, when the whole influx of refugees from the Middle East came into Europe and many of them to Sweden and how we as a church needed to step out of our boat. We never done anything like this but we put a big banner on our church saying refugees welcome and we started opening up our hearts and our doors for the Muslim refugees. We started giving them medical care and food. We started giving them uh, 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 clothing and lodging and help them out in this new home nation of theirs. Instead of creating, instead of looking at them as a problem, we just saw a great potential of all of a sudden now we can reach them with the love of Jesus. And as we started preaching and sharing the gospel of Jesus with them, they started having dreams and visions about Jesus. And all of a sudden we saw hundreds of Muslims come to the Lord. Now, one of the things we do at Word of Life is we have a Bible school that has graduated 12,000 uh, young people throughout the course of these past few years. Now we had to start a new Bible school, a former Muslim Bible school for converts that has come to, to Jesus Christ from a background of believing in Allah. And in the, the past two years only, we have graduated over 500 such converts from this Bible school. Now I got so many church members named Muhammad, I don't know what to do with them all. But I know now as I look back at my congregation as we worship on Sunday morning, and I see all these sons and daughters of Ishmael worshiping the Lord, I have to pinch myself because I realized simply by not stepping out of the boat, we would have lost this entire move of God. 
simply by staying in our comfort zone and not daring to do something new, to, to step out of our safety zone, out of the zone in which we are full, fully in control, we would have lost this entire miracle of the, I mean, still to this day, 75% of all those who come to Christ in our church are former Muslims who come to faith in Jesus Christ. And again, that happened because of the move of the Spirit, but also by us at that critical point being willing and able to step out of our boat. And I don't know how this transcends into your world, but I pray that it will. And if I can just leave you with this prayer, that dare to believe this coming week, dare to believe that the Spirit is with you, dare to believe it when you feel Him, dare to believe it when you don't, and step out of your boat, dare to do something you've never done before so you can see something you've never seen before. And when we do together as the church of Jesus Christ on this earth, that will connect the church prepared to speak to the world prepared to listen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for all my brothers and sisters. And I thank you that as we leave church today, we will leave with an awareness that the Holy Spirit is with us and with a willingness to step out of the boat, out of our comfort zone, if Jesus should call us to do so. Bless all my brothers and sisters in this wonderful church here in Barcelona. And I pray for a mighty growth, a mighty revival to be poured out by your Spirit among them and through them all over this beautiful city. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, church, for having me. Thank you so much, Pastor Brandy, Pastor John. Maria and I love you so much, and we cannot wait to see you again. We consider you to be our best friends in the kingdom of God in Europe. So God bless you. Thank you so much again for having me, and I hope to see you again soon. God be with you all. Thank you.